Section five of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section five A true artist takes no notice whatever of the public the public is to him non-existent he has no poppied or honeyed cakes through which to give the monster sleep or sustenance he leaves that to the popular novelist mr oscar wilde's defence to the editor of the st james's gazette footnote june the twenty eighth sir as you still keep up though in a somewhat milder form than before your attacks on me and my book you not only confer upon me the right but you impose upon me the duty of reply you state in your issue of to-day that i misrepresented you when i said that you suggested that a book so wicked as mine should be suppressed and coerced by a tory government now you did not propose this but you did suggest it when you declare that you do not know whether or not the government will take action about my book and remark that the authors of books much less wicked have been proceeded against in law the suggestion is quite obvious in your complaint of misrepresentation you seem to me sir to have been not quite candid however as far as i am concerned this suggestion is of no importance what is of importance is that the editor of a paper like yours should appear to countenance the monstrous theory that the government of a country should exercise a censorship over imaginative literature this is a theory against which i and all men of letters of my acquaintance protest most strongly and any critic who admits the reasonableness of such a theory shows at once that he is quite incapable of understanding what literature is and what are the rights that literature possesses a government might just as well try to teach painters how to paint or sculptors how to model as attempt to interfere with the style treatment and subject matter of the literary artist and no writer however eminent or obscure should ever give his sanction to a theory that would degrade literature far more than any didactic or so-called immoral book could possibly do you then express your surprise that so experienced a literary gentleman as myself should imagine that your critic was animated by any feeling of personal malice towards him the phrase literary gentleman is a vile phrase but let that pass i accept quite readily your assurance that your critic was simply criticising a work of art in the best way that he could but i feel that i was fully justified in forming the opinion of him that i did he opened his article by a gross personal attack on myself this i need hardly say was an absolutely unpardonable error of critical taste there is no excuse for it except personal malice and you sir should not have sanctioned it a critic should be taught to criticise a work of art without making any reference to the personality of the author this in fact is the beginning of criticism however it was not merely his personal attack on me that made me imagine that he was actuated by malice 
what really confirmed me in my first impression was his reiterated assertion that my book was tedious and dull now if i were criticising my book which i have some thoughts of doing i think i would consider it my duty to point out that it is far too crowded with sensational incident and far too paradoxical in style as far at any rate as the dialogue goes i feel that from a standpoint of art there are true defects in the book but tedious and dull the book is not your critic has cleared himself of the charge of personal malice his denial and yours being quite sufficient in the matter but he has done so only by a tacit admission that he has really no critical instinct about literature and literary work which in one who writes about literature is i need hardly say a much graver fault than malice of any kind finally sir allow me to say this such an article as you have published really makes me despair of the possibility of any general culture in england were i a french author and my book brought out in paris there is not a single literary critic in france on any paper of high standing who would think for a moment of criticising it from an ethical standpoint if he did so he would stultify himself not merely in the eyes of all men of letters but in the eyes of the majority of the public you have yourself often spoken against puritanism believe me sir puritanism is never so offensive and destructive as when it deals with art matters it is there that it is radically wrong it is this puritanism to which your critic has given expression that is always marring the artistic instinct of the english so far from encouraging it you should set yourself against it and should try to teach your critics to recognize the essential difference between art and life the gentleman who criticised my book is in a perfectly hopeless confusion about it and your attempt to help him out by proposing that the subject matter of art should be limited does not mend matters it is proper that limitation should be placed on action it is not proper that limitation should be placed on art to art belong all things that are and all things that are not and even the editor of a london paper has no right to restrain the freedom of art in the selection of subject matter i now trust sir that these attacks on me and my book will cease there are forms of advertisement that are unwarranted and unwarrantable i am sir your obedient servant oscar wilde sixteen tite street s w june twenty seventh End of section 5